Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another project walkthrough. Uh, this time we're doing a little project to practice using third-party APIs in our Vue.js application. So uh, here we are at the SU Web Dev GitHub page for this project repo. Um, we can take a peek at the README page here really quickly. Uh, we'll see that we're going to be building a little project that's going to use the Datamuse API. The Datamuse API is very helpful and it uh, allows us to look up all sorts of things here. Um, we can, you can read these things, you know, words that sound like elephant, words that start with T, end in K, and have two letters in between. Um, there's all these different things that we can do with it, and uh, it has well-explained query parameters and everything, and it requires no API key or authentication at all. It's just a, a read-only API that you can use to help build uh, basically writing tools. Um, so word suggests and things like that. We're going to use it to build something that I'm calling the Rhymesaurus, uh, that is a rhyming thesaurus. And then we'll also use it to experiment a little more. Uh, this entire project that I'm gonna walk through is explained here in uh, the Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications book. And uh, we can read through the whole process here. This walkthrough does not show us how to create the last part of this project which is making a brand new component it walks us through the first component and then doing the second one is basically duplicating uh, the work of creating that first component so we won't uh, be worrying about that but basically uh, we'll get an output that sort of looks like this and it's pretty fun to play with the data muse api so uh, that's that's everything in terms of like what we're doing in this project all of our edits in the supplied file are going to be in the rhymesaurus.view file. So if we go in there, we'll find a bunch of to-dos. Uh, by the end of it, we'll also have to update the router definition. So there's a couple to-dos in that file as well. And we'll be creating a brand new file. But first, let's start out by forking this, direct, this repository into our personal GitHub account. This makes a copy of this repository for us so that we can work from it on our own. Um, once it's done, we can then uh, copy or clone the files into our workspace. Uh, then we, of course, need to install all of the dependencies for this project. So we'll let npm install do its thing. Um, then we'll open up the files. I use Sublime for my editing. You can use whatever software you prefer for your editing. And of course, let's go ahead and run the development server so that we can see what we have to start with here. So we can see that we have a form, we have sort of a blank spot where results will be found, and then we have a no words found message, and then this red box will actually contain errors later on. So um, so everything is sort of showing in the template. And if we look at the actual file here, we can see uh, that we've got a component that's got a bunch of to-dos. And so what we're seeing in the template are all the stubs of everything. And, um, and it, we have a bunch of to-dos in the logic as well. So that makes sense. That's what we expect to see here. Uh, then if we also if we take a look at our router definitions, we'll see that we have a couple to-dos there just reminding us to import the new component and add the new route definition. Um, and that's, that's basically all that we really need to modify for this project. So uh, to get working on the project, first I'm going to approach writing the script. I'm going to create that find words method, which is going to require me to f add a methods property here to the component definition uh, and then create a find words function function inside of that methods property and then um, make sure that I'm setting the, the parameters uh, properly. Uh, there's a typo there. Um, and so uh, so I will um, start working with that and then I'll probably complete the, the template and then once I have this one all working then I'll, I'll look at the, the new component. Uh, if you just wanted to kind of get an idea of what's happening here and get an idea of where everything is and where you need to make edits, uh, we've taken a look at the repo. We've taken a look at the API documentation. You're definitely going to want to read through this a little more closely, as you, especially as you try to think about your own uh, variation on this project. 
Um, we've seen sort of what the interface looks like, so we're going to put in a word that we're going to find rhymes for, and then a word that we want to find synonyms for, and then it's going to give us a result that, um, like I said, looks kind of like this image here in the uh, project walkthrough where we've found rhymes for ham that are related to test. So we have exam, rhymes with ham related to test. Um, that's why we call it the rhyming thesaurus. This is one of the fun things that we can do with an API is we can combine different features to create tools that maybe not everybody would need or maybe not everybody would think to create, but um, we can do them and get some interesting results. So, you know, if you were trying to write poems or essays or something like that, this could be uh, really interesting. If you were writing rhyming essays, that is. <laughs> um, so we're going to jump into editing this and making this whole thing work. If you want to cut out now until you uh, and give, give yourself a shot to work it on your own, uh, feel free to do that. Otherwise, um, feel free to uh, follow along. You could watch it and then go back to work it on your own, or you could watch it, you could work it as you watch it. Um, always good to kind of watch the whole thing and then go back and try to work it on your own. I think that's the best way for learning. But uh, certainly do whatever works for you, and um, don't be afraid to pause this fast forward it or revisit it later on, okay? Um, so, first of all, let's go down here into this logic and let's write this uh, this um, actual command uh, to do the API request. So the first thing that we need to do is import Axios uh, properly. So Axios has already been added to the system. If we look here in the package.json, we can see that Axios exists here under our dependencies list. So when we ran npm install, it already installed Axios. If we needed to, we could always run the command npm install save Axios, which is included in the book uh, version of this walkthrough. Um, that, that is uh, a necessary if you haven't if you're trying to install a new module to work with in your system if you're using a new component that you want to work with in your in the system it's a node module you can run npm install and you can um you can get this to work uh so um we can say import axios from axios and semicolon there and we should that should work uh, if we made a mistake importing, we'd probably see an error here, uh, some sort of syntax error, but it looks like we're, we're pretty good, so I believe we have done that properly. Um, of course, we could also go and check in the project itself, because of course this written walkthrough, um, import Axios from Axios, so we, we did it properly. Uh, this is all um, you know really helpful for referring to things as you're working on this project. Uh, don't be don't be bashful about sort of looking at the book and whatnot. So in order to create methods, we need to define a methods property here. Um, then uh, this method is going to be called find words, and so we the methods itself is an object. We create a property called find words and assign that to a function, and um, and then uh, so we've done that. And then we need to create an Axios statement that is going to request from the DataMuse API here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL. And we're going to say axios.get. And the first argument of that get method is going to be the base URL here. And then we're going to specify a configuration object. So we're just going to make an object there. And then we want to specify the property called params. So we're going to specify that. And we're going to say ML is going to be equal to this dot phrase and rel ry, which means related rhymes, is going to be uh, set to this dot rhyme. So that matches these values that we define up here in the data template, which we'll also use in the form up above in the template for this component. So we're going to make sure to. Uh, set that properly and then we're going to after that we're going to do a that dot then and we're going to use the arrow syntax to 
to define a function and that function is going to basically just say this dot results equals response dot data so that is what is going to be executed when the response is received by the Axios promise then this will be executed and this response is going to have an attribute called data which we will set the results equal to and we'll use results up in the uh, template up above then we will define a catch method uh, clause on this Axios call which will uh, capture an error and it will set this dot errors dot push error and so all it's going to add whatever error it ca it catches to the errors uh, to the errors uh, array which has been initialized to an empty array here and we're going to use that in the template as well to uh, to populate an errors list if, if, if there is an error so we're going to go ahead and save that and what we hope is that over here we don't see any syntax errors light up so we didn't have any syntax errors light up that means our typing must be fairly decent today but we still can't really tell whether or not we have this thing working until we're able to execute find words um, so let's um, let's go up here into the template we'll go ahead and we will uh, delete all of these to do's here and we'll go up into the template and the first thing that we need is a submit event handler which at this point this should be pretty much rote we know that we need to do the v on submit and we know that we need to use the prevent modifier to prevent the default event handlers from firing and then we're just gonna run find words once we uh, once we submit this form um, at this point we can save this and now we actually have a way to execute um, we actually have a way to execute the uh, the find words function so we should be able to open up our terminal here or our console here and we should be able to say find words for a ham related to test and if we search for those we can see that we have an XHR finished loading which gave us some data if we go to the view dev tools tab here we can see here that we have a array with three items in it that is results so that means that um, results has been populated with data from our API and we can also see that the word exam is the first result exam rhymes with ham so we're happy about that and uh, it looks so far like everything is basically working so once again we didn't make any typos and we managed to put in the event handler properly now notice that each of these inputs have the model already set here to rhyme and phrase so that was able to be piped in to our request and we can actually see that um, if we go in the network tab we can see that we actually uh, recorded this request and we can see that it has ML set to test and rel ry set to ham. So ML is means like. It finds things that mean the same thing. So it's like our thesaurus search. And then rel ry is it rhymes um, with the word related rhyming. Um, and so it rhymes with ham, but uh, means like test. So we've got all these tools and dev tools that we can use and we should be using to really verify that everything is working together quite well. Um, so now all we have to do is output that information to the screen so our user can see the data that came across. Uh, so here um, we want a VF conditional to make this results list show only if there are results and if the length is greater than zero. So notice that down here results is actually initialized to null, which means that if we say if results, it's going to be false. So we're going to use the VF uh, directive here and we're going to say if results and then we're just going to use the and clause and we're going to say if results and results dot length 
greater than zero. So we only want to show this list if we have actually done a search and if our search results are actually more than zero. So we've actually gotten some kind of search result. So now um, we just need to create the for loop to loop this list item tag. Um, so we're going to use the v4 directive and that is going to be for, I'm just going to say item in results because results is the name of the variable that is getting populated. And then we're going to output, output the word and um, I can see if I look in here, I can see that each one of these results has num syllables, score, and word. So I'm going to output word and score. I could also output num syllables if I wanted to. Um, but so I'm going to say item dot word. I like my spacing, so I'm going to use some spacing there. And then I'm going to say item dot score. And that will output the word and scores for everything. So now if I click back over here. I should be able to find ham and test and I can see that it works pretty well. Now that we have this part of the project completed and working, um, we can work on this no words found message which we want to show up uh, but we don't want to um, show up except for when it needs to. Uh, so we don't want to show up at first and then we want it to show up whenever there are no results actually found. So we're going to use a v else if uh, because we used the v if previously. So we don't want it to show up if we're ever going to get results. So this will just help make sure that that doesn't happen. And um, we're going to say if results and so it starts out the same way as the previous one, but this time we're going to say results.length is zero. So if, if, if the results are zero, then no words found. Um, so we'll save that. And what we should see is that now the results go away. And if we do our ham test again, then we get our results perfectly good. But if we do our orange taxes test, no orange taxes are found. So um, that that is working properly in that case. Uh, the last thing that we need to do inside of this component is just use a conditional here and um, say VL, V if, if there are any errors, so if errors.length is greater than zero, then we want to make sure to output um, the actual error itself. Uh, so in that case, we're going to say error dot message, and that's that's the ad, the property of the error that we're going to want to out, output there. Um, so how could we test that? How could we make an error to happen? Um, well, the easiest way is probably just to mess up the domain here in our request. So I'll save that, and we'll do our ham test again because we know that works, and we definitely get an error, but um, it looks like our message property is not quite correct. So let's see. Um, so it looks here that actually error is just the object. It looks like our error.message, so maybe if we just change it to say, uh, Oh, the problem is that, of course, we overlooked here and we didn't actually do our loop. So let's put in a v4 loop here, error in errors, and I bet now it'll work okay. There we go. Now we see the name of the error right there, and it's actually looping through that, that errors array. So even though there's only one of them, we still need to use that for loop. So we got things fixed up. We were able to use our debug tools. Um, notice in here we can clear the console and refresh and then we can uh, we don't see any errors or anything there and we'll do our ham test again and we get our network error because data test muse.com does not exist if we uh, fix this up and we save it and we do our ham test again 
then we get all of our results back and if we do our orange taxes text again then we should see our no words found so that's all working properly and we're all set up to uh, have that part completed the next part of the project is to make a new component and to um, to make a new component and then to link that together so I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly even though it's not included in the actual written documentation because mostly it's just copying this component and then coming up with a different uh, API call that we can experiment with and if we uh, go in here into the written documentation we can see that there's actually a decent uh, little list of things that we might try so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another rhyming one, but I'm going to find adjectives for a noun that rhyme with another word. So um, I think that one, I think that's going to be fun to work on. Now I encourage you to read through um, all of these things that Data Muse can do and put together your own interesting uh, result. But let's go ahead and um, try this out. So, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, actually make a new component file. And um, I'm going to populate it with just all the information from my Rhymesaurus view. And then I'm going to go, th go in here and I'm going to change things. So this will be um, rhyme adjective. And it will say find rhymes for blank um, that are adjectives used with blank. And so rhyme and phrase will still be um, the same values that I use there. I'm going to change this to um, rhyme adjective. I'm going to actually capitalize it so that um, and then I need to use different so rel rye is still the same thing but instead of rel rye or instead of ml I'm going to use this rel jjb so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to have to define that in quotes here. Actually, I can just define it like that. And um, that will give me the adjectives that apply to the phrase and then the rhymes um, that rhyme with the rhyming words. Um, and so so that will help us too. Maybe we're writing some kind of epic rap poem or something like that. Um, so that's, I think that's everything that we need to do. Um, we're just going to call this um, rhyme adjective. And then we can go into the router definition. And I'm going to say import rhyme adjective from at slash components slash rhyme adjective and then I'm going to add the new route definition here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this route definition say comma and then paste it here and I'm just gonna rhyme adjective rhyme adjective get rid of that to do statement and then rhyme adjective so that will help us um, that will allow us anyways to access this path properly so all that I need to do then here is up here in the template I'm just gonna put a little paragraph up here and I'm gonna use a router link and say to I'm gonna say vbind to equals, and then I'm going to say name is rhyme adjective. And then I'm going to uh, put a little bullet in and I'm going to just copy this same link and I'm going to make it a link back so that it looks like we have like a little menu up on top 
and we'll call this um, Rhymesaurus. And that should work there. And so I'm going to save that. And I'm going to copy it and paste it up at the top of the rhyme adjective uh, component as well. And that way, when we look here, we see these links. Boom, boom. So if I click to, I say find rhymes for blank that are adjectives used with blank. Um, so find rhymes for, I don't know, ham that are adjectives used with test, maybe. No words found. OK. Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, theater. Looks like no words found there either. Um, find wor rhymes for uh, for so. The rhyme with theater. We should get show, right? So there's. Oh. Still finding no words. This is incredibly difficult, I guess. Um, <laughs> let's see here. And we can we can definitely see that if we look here, we can see that our array just has no So let's just see if we just find uh It looks like maybe our requests, they're just returning absolutely empty stuff. Maybe we should pull up Postman and get an idea of how we can um, make this work. So here was one that we did uh, about car. So theoretically, um, If we put in another one for rhyme here, then, so we have car and ham there, then we should get tram. Okay, let's give that a shot in our web browser. And that will, so find rhymes for ham that are adjectives used with car. And tram comes up, awesome. So it does work, but the, the value of the tool is a little bit of dubious. Um, I did realize that in rhyme adjective here, I neglected to change this style to rhyme adjective. So I will do that really quickly. I put a dash in it up above, so I'll put a dash in it there. And that way, our font size will be proper for everything. So um, that concludes this walkthrough of this project. I hope that this was helpful and interesting. I encourage you to play more with both the DataMuse API and the other APIs that are available in our API suggestions um, here. Uh, this, this page lists a lot of really interesting APIs that you can play with and they can be used in projects like this to create all kinds of interesting lookup tools and so forth. So don't be bashful about digging into these. Uh, play with them using Postman, play with them using uh, Vue and Axios, and have a good time. I'll see you on the next project. Take care, everybody. Bye.